Hello everyone, it's time for another read aloud. I'm Mr. Sepchik, and last week we read What Do You Do With A Problem by Kobe Yamada and illustrated by Mae Beesom. Now, this is not the first book in the What Do You Do series by these two author by this author and illustrator, and today we're actually going to start out with the first one. What do you do with an idea? And once again, it's written by Kobe Yamada and illustrated by Mae Beeson. Now, something I really like about these series is that the concept of a problem or an idea is very vague, allowing you to apply it to almost anything in your life or any challenges you may come across. So an idea is something you think about. It's something you come up with and it could be an idea to solve a problem. It could be an idea like, what are you going to do today? What do you want to be when you grow up? Or even something as simple as, what do you want for lunch? Hmm. Tacos. Yeah. But anyways, we are going to start today with the book that actually started this series in a collection that the author calls What You Do Matters. So this is What Do You Do With An Idea. Let's get started. What Do You Do With An Idea? Written by Kobe Yamada and illustrated by May Beesom. One day, I had an idea. Where did it come from? Why is it here? I wondered. What do you do with an idea? At first, I didn't think much of it. It seemed kind of strange and fragile. I didn't know what to do with it. So I just walked away from it. I acted like it didn't belong to me. But it followed me. I worried what others would think. What would people say about my idea? I kept it to myself. I hid it away and didn't talk about it. I tried to act like everything was the same as it was before my idea showed up. But there was something magical about my idea. I had to admit I felt better and happier when it was around. It wanted food. It wanted to play. Actually, it wanted a lot of attention. It grew bigger and we became friends. I showed it to other people even though I was afraid of what they would say. I was afraid that if people saw it, they would laugh at it. I was afraid they would think it was silly. And many of them did. And they said it was no good. They said it was too weird. They said it was a waste of time and it would never become anything. And at first, I believed them. I actually thought about giving up on my idea. I almost listened to them. But then I realized, what do they really know? This is my idea, I thought. No one knows it like I do. And it's okay if it's different and weird and maybe a little crazy. I decided to protect it, to care for it. I fed it good food. I worked with it. I played with it. But most of all, 
I gave it my attention. My idea grew and grew, and so did my love for it. I built it a new house, one with an open roof, where it could look up at the stars. A place where it could be safe to dream. I like being with my idea. It made me feel more alive. Like I could do anything. It encouraged me to think big. And then, to think bigger. It shared its secrets with me. It showed me how to walk on my hands. Because, it said, it is good to have the ability to see things differently. I couldn't imagine my life without it. Then one day, something amazing happened. My idea changed right before my very eyes. It spread its wings, took flight, and burst into the sky. I don't know how to describe it, but it went from being here to being everywhere. It wasn't just part of me anymore. It was now part of everything. And then I realized what you do with an idea. You change the world. The end. I really like the series of books. Um, one thing I noticed is at the beginning of this book, I see a lot of similarities on how he treats his ideas and his problems. He's kind of nervous to handle them at first. They might seem scary or maybe just not good. And he tries to avoid them. But as the story goes on, he learns that the best way to take an idea or a problem is to face it, to handle it straight on. When he gave his idea the love and support it needed, it was able to fly. What ideas do you have to change the world? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope you can take this book's advice and let your ideas fly. I'm Mr. Sepchik, and I'll see you guys in the next read aloud. Bye.